All right, uh, welcome to the program. Uh, it's a faculty development program on blockchain technology, but uh, we have uh, designed it in a way that it should help equally because we are starting from the very basics. And, and I have my chat open, so anytime you face a problem, please just write to me on, uh, uh, on the chat. Uh, if, you see, if you see voice breaking, if you see, do not see the screen or anything, any, any audio problem, just let me know. All right, till then I'll just continue. So welcome, this is a faculty development program, but we have uh, designed it in a way, uh, especially because it's all from the basics, because believe me, uh, the stage in which blockchain is now and uh, what, uh, what I've seen, uh, particularly while teaching anyone till now uh, regarding blockchain and, and its, its other technologies, I've seen that people face the most problem in understanding the basics. What is not clear is why did even blockchain come into existence? I mean, why did, world, why did the world need a technology like blockchain? So that was, uh, so that is a very, uh, that is a question that's imperative to answer. So, uh, and it should be uh, applicable to everyone who's attending this, be, you, you be from any country. So we have received, uh, we have been very fortunate to receive um, registrations from the US, Australia, France, Germany, uh, Cyprus, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Malaysia, apart from India. So that is, that is approximately thousand, reaching thousand registrations. So whoever has been possible, I hope that have joined us today. And, uh, let me admit another batch. All right, <clears throat> great. So, uh, so this should be suitable for everyone. That is how it has been designed. So uh, let's start. All right. So clearly, my purpose for the uh, clearly my purpose for the next three days uh, would be to help this class understand that uh, everything regarding blockchain, right? Because that is uh, the motive of this FDP, and uh, to go from zero to actually something you understand after these three days, uh, at least you understand that uh, what does blockchain mean? What, why blockchain came into existence? Why such a technology was needed? What all technologies does it uh, maybe compete with or maybe replace, right? So uh, these are the things that we'll answer. And then uh, sometimes in the between, we'll definitely go a bit hands-on. So people who are, who are not very technical, will make sure that uh, we start from very basic. So even if you have just a computer in front of you and uh, we'll be sharing the prerequisites for tomorrow uh, after this class today. So you can download some of that stuff uh, directly before the class and we'll make sure that it's easy enough so that you can catch up, right? <clears throat> and uh, great. So, uh, so that would be the purpose. And ultimately what one piece of data that is very important that we'll be taking a look at is uh, that a very, very, very small percentage of IT engineers in India today, especially Indian numbers, I have my, on my, on my tips, but I don't know, I, I'm, uh, I don't have the world numbers on my tips, but for Indian numbers, I am uh, very confident that a very, very low percentage of IT engineers right now are, have any kind of, uh, uh, any kind of uh, blockchain development skills, right? So, uh, right. So, uh, and that is, and why that is important, we'll, we'll visit a slide where we will discuss further that what kind of facts and figures we have currently going on in this, in, in relation to the, uh, to blockchain technology and where everyone else lies in, in terms of uh, skill development, right? And so, and why this will, this will give you an answer that why these next three days are going to be so important for you, because uh, this is a kind of technology that you want to get your hands on now. Just imagine if you would have had a got, have got a chance of uh, giving a contribution uh, to when the steam engine was being developed, right? Or when the internet, when WinServe back in the decades back was developing, uh, uh, was developing uh, the uh, internet, right? Uh, so that is that is one thing that you would not have missed out on, right? And uh, so this is this is why I'm so excited to teach every one of you today that what blockchain is all about, and uh, if it's called the a pillar of the fourth industrial revolution, it makes this makes it so much more important. Uh, and, and a very very good uh, very good thought that I would want to share with you before starting this uh, presentation. Um, just as of yesterday, last night, I had I, I uh, sent the same link uh, to the father of the internet, uh, Dr. Vint Cerf, Vint and Cerf. Uh, he, he built the internet decades back. And, and I've got a very good vote of confidence that uh, teaching 700, 800 people is a very good idea, right? So this is a very big moment for me as well. Uh, and I think, I think uh, this should be very good three days for you. I was glad to share that with you all. All right, so let's, let's proceed. All right, so a basic introduction. Uh, I just, I think my presentation, I just got uh, hung a bit, right. 
So a basic introduction, I am the co-founder of a blockchain-based startup, World, and we are uh, into, uh, this will be very quick, we are into uh, facilitating the loans against warehouse receipts for farmers, and uh, we are increasing their incomes by 25 to 30% by doing this. And we are also saving on the, uh, at the same time, we are also saving uh, millions in frauds uh, for, for the banks who are our main customers, right? Prior to this, I was at policybazaar.com. And uh, I've been an author, I've been a, a speaker, and uh, um, mostly that. So, and I've been an advisor to Blossom Blockchain Courses, a certified blockchain course by IB Council is a very famous course across 145 countries that I've advised. So, uh, I pretty much believe that. Uh, and regarding world, uh, so I'm very happy to share that uh, we have got a good traction, and uh, India's premier business school, I am Ahmedabad, is making a case study on us, which means that. Uh, going forward, once that case study is published, uh, India's uh, top management students, the cream, who get into IIM Ahmedabad, to, uh, who go through the MBA program, the PG uh, program at uh, IIM Ahmedabad, will be studying about World, uh, my startup, as uh, a mandatory requirement of their uh, management education. Uh, all right, so that is very great to share, and I hope all of these things will help me share good facts with you and good knowledge with you over the next three days. Going ahead, let's get a, a bird's eye view on uh, today's agenda. Uh, all right, and again, if any problem, please, okay, let me admit another batch. And I'll be just stopping for these couple of seconds to admit some people because we have the waiting room on. And uh, okay, before I start, in all my prior lectures, I have received one consistent feedback that I sometimes go very, very fast. Today, if you face that, the chat is in front of me on at all times. Please, if you face that problem, just let me know. I'm already, uh, I'm already, uh, so someone has asked me to disable the waiting room. I can't do that right now while inside the meeting, while inside the uh, session. So yeah, so please, I already have that feedback. So if there is, if, if this is the thing that I'm going very, very fast in terms of uh, what I'm speaking, please let me know so that uh, I can, I can modulate accordingly. Just let me know in the chat room. It's, it's on there. It's on my screen forever, right? All right, so going ahead. Uh, Today's bird's eye view, first we'll take a look at, as I've already told, why blockchain? The main question, because what people have been faced, up, have usually faced a problem with is that uh, uh, people are unaware that why such a technology came into place, why decentralization uh, came into place, right? So uh, that is something we'll take a look at. Uh, then we'll go to uh, study some facts and stats that is exactly uh, needed for motivating you and to, to help you understand that why these three days or why getting into blockchain at this point in time, in 2020, when LinkedIn has voted, uh, has ranked uh, blockchain as the number one skill uh, for 2020, this is the absolutely correct time to get into a technology like blockchain. So we'll take a look at some facts and stats uh, in the country uh, and worldwide what, uh, that will motivate you uh, towards, uh, all right, please be a little slow. Thank you so much for this. Is, this is what I wanted. Thanks a lot. I'm very sorry uh, to go fast till now. All right, so uh, we'll take some facts, take a look at some facts and uh, we'll see that what all, uh, uh, where we lie as a country uh, and as, as IT engineers, as IT educators, and as, as IT students. And uh, that should give you a pretty good idea uh, that what kind of future is there and what kind of demand is there, right? Uh, then we'll move on to uh, the actual curriculum for today, which is going to be basic concepts uh, to help you get started, uh, which will mean that we'll take a look at decentralization, we take a look at generations of blockchain, we take a look at uh, the, uh, arriving at a distributed, like arriving at a consensus in a distributed uh, system, right? Um, right, okay, just let me admit on, yeah. So uh, that is something that we'll take a look at. And uh, we'll take a look at a couple of use cases as well, if time permits, otherwise we'll skip it for tomorrow. But uh, we'll try to cover as much as basics as possible for today, right? I tried slowing myself down, but still the chat is open. If you want further uh, trimming it down, please let me know in the chat. And, uh, and towards the end, the agenda will show us that what we need to do uh, to be uh, prepared for tomorrow because tomorrow is a bit of a different kind of a session as we might be if not a lot of basic concepts are uh, remaining from today. Uh, we will be most probably taking a look at it very basic. Believe me, if you're not an IT person and are joining this session, you will love that as well because we will be st we'll start to take it. It's not tomorrow that we'll start uh, coding. We'll start creating a blockchain from scratch or we'll start coding or writing smart contracts or things like that. We'll start taking a look at hands-on, on screen, we'll start taking a look at um, 
uh, even things that uh, maybe maybe uh, how public a blockchain is and how can we do that so if it's public we can see it right uh, uh, we can see it uh, on the internet available on the internet right so uh, I, we will get into that so that is not something for which you have to be a computer science or IT graduate right you can be very well uh, get into uh, all of those uh, concepts and uh, practical sessions as well. I would and I would really love that if 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 uh, you you can join tomorrow as well. Mostly tomorrow end of day, last hour tomorrow and day three, as I can imagine, would be a bit of computer science uh, and all uh, uh, such such concepts that we'll see on terminal directly. Uh, but apart from that, uh, I believe that you love the uh, you 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 will love the uh, technicals that we share, right? <clears throat> all right. So that is it. And okay, a list of prerequisites will be shared. Okay. Uh, so since this is a long program and what I do with my, uh, usually with my lectures and other students is that I, I, I create a dashboard where every kind of information is present, right? About the course, uh, anything extra that you need to read. I come across good and very, very good quality education material every now and then. So that is a dashboard, which is I maintain. So I can just continue to put uh, add a bookmark there and you can just take a look anytime you want. It's free, it's completely public and it's open. It's a notion board. Uh, you can have access to it. I'll give you the link. Uh, and that is where we'll share the prerequisites for tomorrow. We might be sharing a quiz as well after this uh, session that could be emailed by the university and as well as put on the dashboard that I'm uh, talking about. And uh, I mean, all kinds of instructions and everything goes on that dashboard and it's a very it, it i i, I uh, try to make it a treasure trove of uh, whatever you're studying and what can what can actually help you right so uh, and i request anyone that i if i if i left the annotation uh, uh, feature on please do not annotate on my screen then it will uh, kill the purpose right so thank you so much for removing it so <clears throat> all right uh, let me just join uh, yeah so, uh, so that's where we are, and uh, that dashboard should please stop annotating if you're if you're if you're doing it uh, uh, because the, these red marks in the center of my screen will be really really problematic for me. But anyways, we'll we'll uh, move ahead. So, uh, uh, all right, great. So, and and thank you everyone to, to 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 tell me that I'm 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 fine now. Like it's 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 better now, right? And how can I close this annotation now? I have to close it. Uh, just a second. Yeah. Okay. I cleared everything. Great. So, uh, all right. So I, I hope that that dashboard would be useful to you. This presentation would be useful to you. The video will be useful to you. All right, let's get started. All right. So as I was talking about some motivation to get before, uh, we actually start on with core blockchain concepts, please stop annotating. If I can request every one of you, please stop annotating. I'm not able to switch it off forever, but, uh, but please, please stop annotating. Please stop drawing these on my screen. I, I don't know why we would, we would do that. Uh, all right. So great. So that is what I was talking about. We need some motivation before we start on a journey of three days uh, to learn a technology like blockchain. Believe me, blockchain is a bit uh, difficult technology, no doubt. When I started on blockchain, it took me almost seven, eight days full time uh, into it uh, to learn the concepts, the very basic, basic concepts of blockchain. And, uh, and at that time, maybe three, four years back, at that time, we did not have a lot of, uh, really, a lot of uh, uh, material available on the internet as, as compared to now, because a lot of people are taking lectures like I'm doing. And then there's a lot of videos available on the internet, on YouTube, uh, courses. Uh, university uh, cities have started courses. Then uh, uh, I, I know University UNIC, University of Nicosia, uh, who actually conducted the decentralized, 2000, uh, decentralized uh, conference. They were the first university to actually come up with, uh, okay, I'm again going fast. Okay. So they were the first ones to come up with a MS degree in uh, digital currencies. And believe me, one of the best minds teach there. They have written books, they have published a lot, they have done great work. So, so universities have come out with a good uh, number of courses. And uh, even Amity University, which I'm an alum of, uh, they have also come out with a lot of good courses on blockchain technology, decentralized uh, ledger technologies and all. Uh, you can check them out. There's a lot of resources, free, paid, all available there. And uh, but yeah, but let's get motivated because uh, by, by taking a look at some facts and figures and, and where we stand as IT engineers, right? As I was talking, uh, if, if someone of you has missed it, this recording will be available because I see that uh, people are joining late. So if you have missed anything, uh, this recording would be made available. Otherwise we have not started any basic concepts yet. So <clears throat> let's, let's get ahead and uh, let's prepare ourselves for three days, six hours of uh, uh, critical course content.
so I, I would really request every one of you, everyone who's there, and that's, that's, uh, that's 300 people right now. So I would request every one of you to please, 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 before we start, take a very good look uh, uh, on this slide particularly. This is where you can see that one in 400 IT engineers are, are having any kinds of blockchain skills. And if you, if you can see the diagram, I, I really spent a lot of time in creating this diagram by making those uh, red and gray uh, figures. That's it. That's it. If you consider this as the entire IT engineer uh, population, uh, which is approximately in India, it's about, about 20 lakhs, right? Uh, hardly 0.25% of that population is having any kind of blockchain skill. So that is the red part that you can see there. And that is barely anything. 0.25% does not mean anything, right? It's, it's hardly anything. If, if, it, if it would have even been 25%, even that would have been a, a very, very bad number. Because see, if, you, if you're talking about, for example, IT engineers in the country, and if you ask them that how many of uh, the 20 lakh IT engineers know a technology like uh, front-end development, that would be more than 60, 70%, right? Because a lot of people have worked on full stack or full stack and uh, back-end along with front-end. Even, even 50, 60% is still a good number, 25% bad number, 0.25% that further down the line, right? So this is, this is uh, not, uh, not something I think uh, that uh, is, is a very good reflection of where we are currently as a country. This is, this is Indian numbers. And, uh, uh, but yeah, this is pretty much the same situation with the entire world because it has just been 11 years that the technology has been there. Uh, if we compare this with uh, maybe artificial intelligence, cloud computing, or, or even quantum computing. Quantum computing, even even that has not arrived yet, right? Even it has it has uh, uh, taken uh, decades to come come to the position where Google and other IBM and others are still innovating on that front, right? AI and ML today we have a lot of libraries available. I started out as a, started uh, off as a junior data scientist. Uh, I saw some libraries. They were good. They were good to use. They have further innovated a lot of Tesseract and Subflow and all of those libraries are available now in AI, ML, and in data science particularly. Uh, that that help engineers and that's why we have seen a, a great influx of engineers new engineers who know uh, who, have, who have started knowing about uh, uh, data science and uh, machine learning and all but and and that number has grown but uh, clearly 0.25 percent in the entire country of it engineers is very very concerning number for the country but you can definitely imagine that it's a very very brilliant number if you're talking about or thinking about a career, building a career in this particular technology. And you know that this is, this has future, right? LinkedIn is voting it as number one a scale of, of, of the year. Uh, governments are, are uh, taking it up. China has started a, already started a, a POC with, with, with four different cities on a, a central bank digital currency. Uh, sometimes back, sometime back there was a rumor that India is trying to do something with a currency called Lakshmi. Uh, that was pretty much fake, but uh, uh, yeah, so governments have come up with these things as well. So this is going to take mainstream adoption. And, one, and once, that, uh, once that happens, anyone who has been in the game from beginning is going to, is going to benefit a lot. Just, th just imagine if you can just increase this person from 2.25% from 5.0. That's a beautiful increase, right? And uh, great. So, uh, all right, so this is where, so those, those, those red people are the ones who have no idea, who, who, who are the ones who know about blockchain, have some blockchain skills. The gray ones that you see are the people who, have, who are at least in a financial domain. They are IT engineers, but they are at least in the financial domain. So for, for people in financial domain, uh, we have witnessed that it's, it's a bit, tad bit easier to come into a technology like blockchain. Otherwise, uh, and anyone else, it has uh, pretty much been a, a very difficult effort. Uh, as I've seen, as I've seen in my uh, time in teaching, in been in the industry, hiring people, hiring blockchain engineers. Uh, so this is the case. So those are at least on the borderline to get into blockchain uh, skills. And everyone else that you see on the map are the uh, the remaining uh, people out of 20 lakhs IT engineers who are far away from blockchain. So anyone who wants to just get up in the morning one day and wants to just learn blockchain for a week. Believe me, you will get ahead of a lot of people in such a competitive country. Just even learning for block, learning blockchain for a week will, will just push you so ahead. You cannot imagine, believe me. Uh, so I think, I think this slide was very important. This is the condition of our country in terms of numbers of blockchain uh, skilled people, pretty much comparative to the world as well. And uh, so uh, I think that this should inspire you for the next three days and especially for today, uh, for, 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 for being there for the next maybe one and a half hours or so, right? Let's move on. So yeah, as, as, was, as I was talking about, this is the case for 2020's number one skill. 
and sadly, uh, whatever of 2020 is left after all this pandemic and uh, and and all of that, and then cyclones, and then earthquake every day coming uh, in the northern part of India. I don't know what's happening, but whatever it's left, and till the time you're you're still at home, if you are, uh, I am. So uh, you can utilize a lot of your time in learning something like blockchain. And believe me, this is going to pay you off. These two, two and a half, three months of lockdown in the country have helped myself a lot in getting ahead in, in terms of the, uh, the business that I run, in terms of the blockchain education, because everything is related to blockchain in my life at the moment, right? So, so yeah, so please uh, be inspired if you're finding it even remotely interesting. Please get into this technology, which is currently the number one in, uh, let me admit some more, uh, which is currently the number one <clears throat> in, in, uh, in the year for the, for, the, for the skills ranking. And just for your reference, uh, the cloud and artificial intelligence skills are currently number two and number four, as ranked by LinkedIn, of course. Uh, the, same, the same ranking is what I'm talking about. Right. So uh, let's get started. All right, so what's at stake? Another fact, another figure, just to uh, give you and uh, especially people here who are looking for uh, getting into blockchain commercially and uh, want to take a job there and want to develop yourself into a blockchain engineer or a blockchain developer. Salaries for ready to be deployed techies with blockchain experience are at least twice. That's not written here because this sentence was given by, I think, the MD of Randstad India. Uh, yeah, and uh, so he has said that uh, with blockchain experience are twice that of a techie without uh, uh, blockchain. Uh, hi, Harish, if uh, voice cracks up frequently, but, but believe me, uh, after the cyclone, uh, the networks have been pretty bad here. I'm, I was lucky enough to come on, uh, on, on, on my broadband connection just now. Otherwise, we wouldn't have even able to continue with that. So please, please just bear with it. But if it just stops uh, at all, please let me know in the chat. Just let me know. <clears throat> and uh, all right. So yeah, so the MD of Randstad uh, India has uh, said that uh, uh, the block the salaries for ready to be deployed techies with blockchain experience are twice that of a techie without blockchain experience. Believe me, I would love to add here, it is at least twice. Personal anecdote, uh, I've seen salaries, we have given salaries which are way higher than what, what uh, engineers right out of college uh, in normal uh, engineering roles, normal IT based roles earn. We have given way more salaries than that for, for people with even remotely, uh, a remote existence of any kind of blockchain skills, believe this, uh, believe me. And, and a personal anecdote would, would be even I, after I got out of college, the what, whatever job I was getting, when I switched to the blockchain and when I tried getting into a blockchain uh, organization, it was 2.5 times at least. So this is exactly right. And, uh, and this was back, back a few years back. Uh, today, this definitely would have grown further, right? Because the dearth is still continuing. The dearth in blockchain talent is still continuing, right? And, and any, any day average uh, a salary of a blockchain developer in India ranges from INR 5 uh, lakh to 30 lakhs per annum. Uh, that's, that's in INR, uh, please convert your all, or please convert into your respective currencies. And uh, so that is where we are. That's what at stake. And this is what uh, learning blockchain can give you if you are planning to get into this commercial. <clears throat> Let's go ahead. All right. So now we are starting with the concepts finally. And uh, uh, so as I said, the first thing that we would love to look at is uh, the need for decentralization, right? Why decentralization came into picture? Why did the world need something like decentralization? And why, uh, why uh, things like uh, cryptocurrencies and other blockchain networks have come, come up, other blockchain implementations have come up in, in, in such a good force that within 11 years, the technology has uh, achieved such a good hold, right? All right, so I always start with a very classic blockchain example, uh, a bank example per se. For example, <clears throat> just imagine, uh, just imagine that uh, today I want to transfer hundred dollars. Uh, since this is an international class, let's let's switch from INR anymore. And uh, so I want to I want to uh, transfer hundred dollars to uh, to someone, right? I tell my bank, it could be Axis Bank. I tell my bank. Uh, Please deduct hundred to hundred hundred dollars from uh, my account and credit that into uh, person X uh, person X's account, right? What bank does is takes out his ledger, uh, writes it that uh, minus hundred dollars from Abhishek's account plus hundred into uh, X's account, right? <clears throat> what happens if uh, this part was done? Minus hundred from your account from my account was done was written by Axis Bank or any bank, uh, bank Y, and it was very fairly and squarely written in its ledger. What happens if, uh, 
what happens if uh, on the other way around the other uh, the addition the credit of the same amount into my friend's account does not happen what happens then i have technically i have uh, even even though rbi and all are there but let's let's put, keep that apart aside uh, i technically don't have any means of uh, checking out that where has where has the problem been i mean i transferred the money what happened after that right uh but but then we are talking about a situation when there's no rbi or when when maybe the bank refuses to say that uh yes you i i, I did this right so what happens then because the bank's ledger is just confined to the bank's uh, uh to, to the bank right you have no access to the ledger you have no way of knowing that whether the entire transaction was done successfully or not right and uh, <clears throat> uh and at the end uh everything is uh, just not transparent right but still we are placing a lot of trust in such a centralized system so this is what a centralized system is <clears throat> whenever you are putting a lot of trust on an entity which is centralized i mean that's a single entity who is controlling an entire business process right that is where um, uh, you are putting immense faith in 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 uh, immense faith in uh, a centralized entity right that is what centralization is all about so that is what people have been uh, calling out everyone in the blockchain community have been calling out that they want to do away with this kind of a uh, centralized system right um, <clears throat> so that is what centralization is and uh, typically uh, people who went uh, for blockchain as a technology who adopted blockchain as a technology they were not 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 for just for cryptocurrencies they wanted a system that was decentralized so we'll take a look at what decentralization is so decent this is what decentralization is when you are putting when you are taking away the uh, the uh, control from a single from a central entity and putting it in a group of people in a group of entities that is all what decentralization is the what the word means right and uh, decentralization is typically what the entire blockchain technology is uh, built upon nothing else believe me uh, to be to be very honest this is the core technology and uh, Uh, this is what people have been a fan for and uh, this is the uh, usability that people wanted which is why blockchain gained such uh, mainstream adoption uh, till now so uh, so what happens when uh, so so that bank example that we were taking so what happens when <clears throat> we just uh, what what we do is we just uh, clearly uh, have faith on access bank that uh, my 100 dollars were transferred to my friend and then nothing happens another uh, use case is that what happens if you transfer that 100 dollars tomorrow morning you get up in the morning and access bank's ledgers are destroyed they are hacked they are destroyed anything can happen uh, to uh, to a centralized ledger right what will you do uh, typically uh, these banks have a lot of uh, security protocols in place but no security protocol is really uh, that that strong to uh, keep a tab on <coughs> uh, uh, keep a tab on any kind of uh, security attack uh, yeah bg uh, yeah uh, pranav the ppt is not advancing because that's it i mean that that's please please listen to me uh, everything is not written down in pointers uh, ppt is not uh, to to help you read uh, that's uh, that's what i am here for right so just take a look at the pointers and just listen to me please and uh, i should be able to explain it to you so that's it i'll i'll make sure that the ppt uh, moves ahead when when needed so uh, all right so uh, yeah so <clears throat> so that's what uh, where is it uh, the bank will, will not be able to do anything if uh, the uh, there's a security breach and all your records whatever you were holding whatever you were uh, supposed to get from your bank or supposed to pay to your bank or or anything for that matter right it all gets washed away because of a major security hack that uh, that maybe the bank faces right so this is clearly uh, a, a a cause where centralized entities or centralized ledgers particularly centralized ledgers please note this term this is typically where centralized ledgers are going to be very uh, troublesome right you will have nothing to do you will have nowhere to go no one else no other bank no other entity has that uh, has those records in 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 place right so uh, that's that's uh, that's essentially why decentralization came into picture and uh, and typically uh, this is this is uh, so so what happens in decentralization let's move to the second point this is what decentralization is what happens in decentralization is that the same recording the same recording of uh, the all the transactions that happen with ledgers kept with multiple entities across a network so it could be all of us all of the participants we have 293 participants here right now all of us could be the nodes will be come to these uh, concepts later all of us could be nodes on a blockchain network on a distributed network 
and we all can be volunteering or can be uh, active in in uh, keeping a record of the transactions then what will happen is that every one of us will have that ledger and once a transaction happens we will write it down that is what decentralization is and this thing as we will see is pretty much secure is very secure and uh, is, is, is almost unhackable. Nothing in the world is unhackable, but still theoretically, it has been proven that blockchain networks can be hacked, but, uh, uh, but to, be, uh, to be very honest, uh, uh, that's just theory. I mean, there's a lot of, there are a lot of attacks that uh, uh, can take place in a blockchain network, but uh, don't necessarily do because of the uh, ingrained technological uh, advancement and the, uh, the cryptography and everything that goes behind the securing transactions that are put on a blockchain network, right? We'll see that, we'll see, see how blockchain works, right? <clears throat> All right, let's get ahead. All right, so as we just uh, uh, learned that uh, the grave is issues of a centralized world was that you do not have complete control over your data, where, what data is going. So we took an example of a bank where we were talking about a financial uh, use case, right? Uh, what happens when uh, you are putting complete trust in an entity like Facebook? You do not know where Facebook is giving the data. And I, I hope you are aware, all of you are aware of a lot of scandals that have happened, a lot of uh, issues that have come out with, with Facebook's, uh, the way Facebook operates and all of that. And uh, so pretty much, uh, so, so pretty much uh, that is uh, where, uh, yeah, exactly, Cambridge Analytica, someone wrote in the uh, chat, a lot of things have happened and you do not know whether that actually happened or not. Zuckerberg can be defending himself all, all, all way long, but uh, uh, clearly people whose data was exposed, they cannot know whether what happened to their data. So a lot of technological solutions on blockchain have come out. Uh, which give you this complete control, right? So blockchain can be implemented across various use cases. So one of this, these uh, could, be a, could be a use case. The banking is an example. The farmers uh, giving loans to farmers is an example. All of these use cases, some of which we'll take a look at today, tomorrow maybe, and uh, where, where blockchain can be very efficiently used, right? So that is where you do not have a complete control over your data in centralized systems. <clears throat> You can trust a single entity uh, which can any day go ro rogue, right? With any morning, just Axis Bank says that I have nothing to do with your money. I have I have forgotten everything that you've paid to me or uh, whatever, right? And uh, and especially where centralization is a problem is that you are in a sector that is filled with collusion, corruption, and all of that. And I, we are in a in a sector uh, world. World is in a sector where we have seen. Back in 2014, uh, there was a scandal, Chinese scandal, all of it starts from China, Chinese scandal called um, uh, Qingdao scandal. It was, it was millions and millions of dollars uh, at stake. Citibank, banks like Citibank, they lost a lot because multiple receipts were generated. And uh, I mean, multiple loans were taken on the same piece of receipt. I mean, just, it's, it's just like putting on same house for collateral uh, as, a, as a collateral across two different banks. That's really fraud, right? And that is why our main customers are also uh, banks because we have seen that, uh, okay, go slow a bit. All right, <clears throat> again. So thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, so exactly. So what, what, uh, what happens is that uh, uh, banks are not able to understand that when a farmer or a trader is colluding or is, is generating fake receipts or is, uh, or is uh, typically maybe, uh, colluding with the warehouse itself, where you're depositing the grains or uh, taking the same receipt, going to two different banks. So for example, you deposited thousand uh, kilograms of rice, took it to ICICI bank, took a loan of maybe five lakh rupees. When that same receipt, took that same receipt and uh, went to uh, Axis bank and again took a loan of five lakh rupees. Both the banks are thinking that uh, I have 1000 kilograms of rice in that warehouse as a collateral, but it's not. Either of the banks would only have control over that, right? And would typically be ICICI bank because that is uh, the one who uh, issued the loan first, right? So, <clears throat> so typically, uh, so uh, all right. So typically, thank you so much. Uh, the speed is totally okay. All right. So please stop. Uh, please stop annotating again. Yeah. So uh, so typically, that's a very good use case. And uh, even even financial sectors uh, have seen the most usage of blockchain technology till now, but uh, every other field, construction technology, um, uh, supply chain management, uh, even, even human resources, everything, all of these things can actually uh, witness a lot of uh, uh, betterment uh, just, uh, just, just with uh, the implementation of blockchain as a technology. Just give me a moment, please. <clears throat> All right. 
So, <clears throat> so that is where uh, a centralized world, a centralized entity creates a lot of problem where you face collusion, where you face corruption, where you face fake receipts, where you face uh, uh, bribery, uh, where you face all of these things where people tamper. Okay, a very good uh, definition would be an area, a sector where people uh, specifically have a, have 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 a lot of problems with. Uh, uh, yes, please stop annotating. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks a lot for for doing this. Uh, please don't do this. I uh, please don't underline centralized world. I know uh, what it means. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Please stop annotating. Really requesting everyone to please stop annotating, right? I could mute everyone, but I cannot. I'm not able to stop annotations, right? So uh, thank you so much for not annotating anymore. <clears throat> and uh, so yeah, so that is that is where. Uh, so that was a very good definition that I was uh, following up with. That uh, what happens when uh, uh, you are you are in a sector where you are particularly uh, facing a lot of fraud, where you are particularly facing uh, people use cases where people tamper with the data. Right, the people uh, are tampering with the supply chain data. The, they are tampering with quality control data. So these are very, very uh, heinous crimes because uh, if, if it's about a food chain and you are tampering with the quality control data, the consumer does not get to know what kind of food is he having. Just try to imagine what kind of uh, grave issues. Uh, what kind of? Just a second. Okay. So what kind of grave issues? Just a second. All right. So uh, yeah. So let's let's get it. So that is that is where uh, a lot of problems can happen, and blockchain can uh, uh, definitely uh, do a lot of uh, benefits uh, benefits there. All right. Let's get it. All right. So uh, so is the answer to all of this, all of the centralization and all of these centralized agencies and all, is the answer a distributed ledger technology? Is it, is it blockchain that we are talking about? A lot of it, yes. Not everywhere I would say that blockchain can be implemented, but wherever it can uh, can be, uh, it is possibly the best solution that you have available till now for, for promoting um, things like uh, transparency, immutability, right? All of these things, uh, just a second. All right. I'm very sorry. I have to just admit people. In in, in meanwhile, uh, for tomorrow, I'll I'll just uh, switch off this uh, waiting waiting room concept. <clears throat> yeah. Just give me a moment, please. Oh, okay. All right. Hmm. All right, so <clears throat> so that is where we are. Uh, we would take a look at why blockchain can be very helpful in uh, in in getting around these uh, these these cumbersome issues where uh, people face a lot of problems, right? And uh, whether DLT uh, technologies like DLT, like blockchain, are a solution to it. And where they are not, we'll also take a keen look at where they are not, because where they are not, implementing a technology like blockchain will create a really big overhead. Uh, for you, uh, which you will not be able to really sustain it, right? You have to be very uh, thoughtful where you have to uh, implement blockchain. So just let's take a look, right? So before we start with anything like that, let's take a look at uh, what the myths of blockchain are generally in the in the industry, right? Um, the myth one, the first myth is that uh, blockchain is cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is blockchain. They are one and the same thing, right? For a long time, believe me, for a long time I've been teaching people, and I've uh, the first thing that I've had to say every time. Is that for the next uh, few hours or two days or three days, whatever it is, uh, the session is. Please forget Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all as cryptocurrencies only, and uh, and stop attaching them with the uh, technology of blockchain. They are two different things, right? How they are similar? That is what we'll take a look at. But they do not mean one and the same thing, right? So please, I'm requesting every one of you to forget that uh, blockchain means cryptocurrency. Blockchain? Have you heard about blockchain? Yes, it's Bitcoin. No, I've seen, I've heard this line so many times, uh, everywhere. In lectures, on online, on articles, everywhere, blockchain, Bitcoin, not the same thing, right? So let's let's take a look. So the Bitcoin cryptocurrency was the first uh, implementation of the blockchain technology. That's where we got blockchain, right? Uh, to be very honest, 2009 was when blockchain was born, and the first implementation was Bitcoin cryptocurrency, and that is why since the time 2015, 16, 17, when uh, since the time when Bitcoin has started to become very very famous, that is when people have started hearing about it. Um, People have started to know about uh, <clears throat> blockchain as Bitcoin and Bitcoin is blockchain, right? So one and the same thing. No, it is one implementation of blockchain, right? 
and uh, so 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 uh, cryptocurrencies like bitcoin ethereum dashcoin lisk uh, all of these right monero m many of these you might have already heard but uh, but to be very honest uh, one second but to be very honest uh, these are completely different things uh, they are an implementation of blockchain and plus we'll take a look at different generations of blockchain so that we can get a good idea of uh, we can get a good idea of uh, let me have a bit more people so that we can get a good idea of uh, what all <clears throat> uh, what all things that we can we, we have uh, when we are talking about cryptocurrencies and what we have and when we are talking about the core of blockchain technology when we'll be doing hands on we uh, might be taking a look at ethereum but the Ethereum blockchain, right? Yeah, it uses Ether as a cryptocurrency, but does not mean the same thing. When you are doing, uh, so every activity on a blockchain takes definitely takes the form of a, uh, definitely takes the, takes the form of a, a token, uh, which is which is the native currency of that particular system. Uh, but not every time it's a mode of currency, it's a payment system, not every time. Uh, blockchains which are used for payments are different. Definitely, uh, that, is, that is one uh, use case, but, uh, uh, all right. Uh, yeah, I understand. Uh, the thing is going on for Black Lives Matter, but let's let's please not annotate it uh, in the presentation. I have to stop this. <clears throat> all right. So great. Uh, so that was one myth. The other myth is that blockchain can become everything. As I was telling you, so this is a very important point. Someone just uh, uh, came up to me and said that I'm planning to implement a blockchain uh, network on on my uh, on my movie streaming. Uh, service, right? I'm, I'm, I'm planning to build a movie streaming service, a very short, a small network movie streaming service with few movies and all, maybe few videos. And I want to do it on blockchain. Why will you want to do it on blockchain? You have to understand the basic characteristics of blockchain, whether those basic characteristics of blockchain can help your, uh, uh, so, uh, so it says that my internet connection is unstable. Please just check if, if I'm totally lost, if I'm totally gone, just let me know in the chat. And, uh, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go slow as well. So uh, essentially, when we are taking a look at uh, um, uh, things like, uh, so, so yeah, uh, the, the, the guy was telling me that uh, I want to put up the entire movie distribution channel on blockchain. So unless you understand that what the core features are of blockchain and how they can help you or your solution or your product, like when we are building world, when we are building the, uh, when we are building the system that facilitates loans to farmers, not everything is on blockchain, no. Even the farmers especially are not on blockchain because they have nothing to do with being on blockchain, right? And we have nothing to do with farmers being on blockchain. So why spend the extra overhead on bringing things and entities and stakeholders on blockchain who have nothing to do with blockchain? So that is a very good example. What will you do by putting up a, 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 a so for example, if you're putting up your to-do app on the blockchain, why? Your to-do app is totally confined to yourselves. You are never going to defraud yourselves in your to-do app, right? I mean, that's, that's idiotic. So why would you do that? So, um, so I would you do that. So bringing such things on the blockchain does not make sense. Right. So, um, so definitely it's a probably a waste of time, waste of resources, waste of money, everything. So, uh, we'll, we'll take a very keen look at what all implementations blockchain can have. What are the characteristics of blockchain? And then you'll be on your own to make sure every time, whenever you're thinking of implementing blockchain, uh, technology into any kind of network, uh, system, application, program, anything. Please make sure that that program will be able to make good use of blockchain technologies, core characteristics of immutability, anonymity, transparency, all of these or not. If not, probably your answer is that do not implement blockchain, right? It is going to be a very wasteful uh, endeavor for you. This is a very important thing because I, I've seen after, especially after my lectures, a lot of people are like, uh, uh, blockchain as a technology is great. I'm planning to build a, uh, build my fourth year project in, uh, in blockchain using blockchain. What are you trying to build? Um, maybe a basic system that, that just uh, puts up your library books or something like that on blockchain. Just think properly why you want to implement blockchain and whether it's going to be useful for you or not. Right? Let's get it. So out of, when we said that whether the answer is a DLT or a blockchain, right? So out of everything, why blockchain? So <clears throat> as we can see that no central point of failure is the first point that comes to us uh, when we are talking about blockchain. Definitely, that's what decentralization is all about. Centralized servers and centralized uh, entities have uh, fragile databases. They are hacked. They can uh, uh, they can vanish like that, and you will have no control over the data, right? When we do that, when when we make it decentralized, when we make it distributed. So when we are talking about distributed ledger technology, that is what DLT technologies are. Uh, 
uh, and even before blockchain dlts were existing it's not that uh, blockchain came out with dlts right and dlt is anywhere where you are just using multiple databases spread across a network with different stakeholders and you're putting your data on it that's it that's 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 essentially um, and that's essentially what dlts are so so uh, that's 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 what they are right and uh, so exactly so you have to avoid a central point of failure uh, we are talking about centralized databases that can go wrong when they face a security hack, they face a power outage or anything like that, right? And uh, the data inside that should not get affected. And to, to avoid that, we, we definitely employ a lot of technologies like uh, mirroring, like uh, uh, network hard disk, like we use those RAID hard disks and all. These are a lot of technologies, but they are all again centralized. They are they are with a single entity. Now, if, if that particular entity goes out of business, that particular entity uh, faces a devastating attack or something like that, that entity goes away, right? But when we are talking about different entities, okay, so this is very important point. When we are talking about different entities, they are not usually spread in a single building. They are spread across the world. So if anything devastating happens, so there's a very big possibility that that will happen with one, two or three stakeholders. Not an, not the entirety of the stakeholders that comprise of the entire network, the blockchain network, right? So that is the best case to say that whenever uh, with, with a with a distributed ledger, things will still be safe. At least one of them, or two of them, or, or at least 20, 30 percent of the network will have that copy, the latest copy of the ledger from which the uh, the, the other part of the uh, destroyed or devastated network can later resume, right? At least the system will not stop, and that is why Bitcoin, Ethereum, all of that are 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 forever. They are networks. Uh, so again, going back to Bitcoin, of course, but because that's a that's a Gen One blockchain, uh, Generation One blockchain. But uh, uh, so typically, uh, and and they are public blockchains. So we'll take a look at types of blockchains as well, maybe tomorrow. So a public blockchain is out there for the public to see, and they will be forever. And that is why, importantly, that is why when we are saying that we'll be issuing the certificates of this uh, course uh, on the public Ethereum blockchain, that will be there forever. You will upload it to LinkedIn, but anyone wants to check the authenticity of that, uh, <clears throat> the authenticity of that uh, uh, certificate can just go on the Ethereum blockchain, give your hash, and they'll be able to see it. You'll be able to understand it better maybe tomorrow. I mean, we'll see Etherscan and all, uh, but today just take it, take my word for it. It's a completely different technology. It is wonderful, has a lot of different characteristics than what you have seen till now in other kinds of technologies. And... Uh, Right. Yeah. So, uh, so that's that's essentially uh, what 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 it is, right? And uh, trust in business or in any kind of an association, trust always comes first, right? When we are trying to do a business with between different entities, anything before anything, before technology, trust comes. A centralized technology. So, so for example, if uh, Hindustan Unilever is dealing with a thousand different uh, supply chain. Uh, managers or maybe uh, suppliers particularly uh, what happens so it cannot trust every every other supplier right and without a system in place right uh, just can't put blind trust blind faith on them so and and, and before even before a technological implementation it trust comes uh, in between because unless uh, the uh, brand does not trust its suppliers the brand will not trust itself to give great quality products to the customer, to the end user, right? You will not get great quality biscuits. You'll not get great quality uh, noodles, right? So that is why to, to bolster trust amongst businesses, then we implement a technology like blockchain because uh, uh, blockchain is all about trust. Blockchain is all about uh, transparency. Blockchain is all about immutability. You know, Hindustan Unilever would know that when one thing would be recorded and if after two months af after that, if some consumer faces a problem, the supplier will not be able to change a piece of data which, which dates two months back. You cannot change data on a blockchain. So we will take a look at uh, uh, the characteristics of blockchain, but, but you definitely have uh, known by now that uh, uh, blockchain is immutable. What it means is that you cannot uh, change anything on the, on the blockchain network. Once it goes, it will be there forever. If your certificate goes wrong on the blockchain, it will be there forever. We'll have to issue you, issue you a new certificate. So when you'll be providing your details, please make sure you provide all your details particularly correct because we will not be able to do that. We will not be able to provide you two certificates. But so sorry for digressing, but this is a use case uh, for this particular uh, session, right? So make sure that you provide your good details so that it goes on the Ethereum blockchain once and it goes correctly, right? So <clears throat> so that's it essentially. And uh, so, so that's where blockchain again comes because wherever uh, trust, trust comes in, 
right? So we have a question: Why only fifty-five percent known required to show the trust to approve the transaction? Why not more than fifty-five percent or less than fifty-five percent? Uh, Taran Preet Singh, uh, thank you for this question. We will come to this. And uh, yeah, exactly. Deepak Sharma has corrected it to fifty-one percent. Uh, we have a very famous attack, and that attack is actually called the fifty-one percent attack. I have covered that in my book as well in great detail. I love that attack because it's completely theoretical. A couple of blockchain networks, I guess, have faced that attack, but they were they, they were smaller networks uh, typically. Something like Bitcoin, the Bitcoin network, the Ethereum network, they cannot. Uh, they, they 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 are. It's very rare that they will ever face a fifty-one percent attack. Uh, why? We'll see to it later. We'll definitely we'll definitely have a, have a, have a, have some uh, some slide definitely on that. And uh, so yeah, so we'll come that come, come to that that why fifty one percent of uh, trust is needed, right? All right. So the uh, another thing would be that uh, of course one characteristic is as we discussed immutable and unhackable, hack proof, right? Um, scam scandals, all of these things that happen in the centralized world cannot happen here because everything is out in the open. You 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 do a scam with any piece of data. Everyone else will know that no, you have done a scam because that data was not what you are representing. Because the same piece of data has been recorded with maybe twenty-one thousand different nodes, who are showing that what that data originally was, and you are showing a different data. That's too easy to call the guy out. That's too easy to call the malign node out, right? So that is why it's 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 so hackproof. And uh, no, that is not why it's hackproof. We'll we'll see that. Uh, uh, why it is hack proof, right? Someone has asked that. Can everyone see the details of all the transaction in a public blockchain? Now, that's a very good question. I uh, don't think I've put anonymity here. Okay, the next slide is about anonymity. Uh, let's go to the next slide, and then then let's let's discuss this. So, a very good question at a very appropriate time. That was the next slide. Blockchain is public, especially public blockchains that we are talking about. It is public but anonymous. It is transparent but anonymous. I am pretty much sure that you have not come across uh, any centralized technology uh, which are which 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 share both these traits, right? Because if if you are talking about transparency, how can it be anonymous, right? Because uh, everything is visible, right? Everything is out there in the open, right? <clears throat> what happens, especially in a public blockchain, is that details of the transaction are are visible. That's why it's 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 uh, transparent, and that's why people can put trust. That's why one core characteristic is trust. Uh, in, in when we are talking about blockchain, but <clears throat> but on the other hand, uh, but on the other hand, when we are talking about uh, anonymity, on even on on a public blockchain, private, permission, any the different types of blockchain, we'll take a look at, uh, and we'll take some a look at some examples as well. Any kind of blockchain, you cannot know who exactly is doing the transaction. You'll have a hash, you'll have a have a public key that shows that this public key transferred ten bitcoins to this public key. You will never get to know that who is behind that those those public keys. So for example, if currently I'm paying you via Paytm, right? My number eight five two seven nine number would come up to you, right? And then you just put it up in True Caller. You you maybe just 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 uh, you can just uh, search it up anywhere, and you'll get that it belongs to me. You'll get the name. You search a blockchain uh, public key, uh, a Bitcoin public key, or uh, uh, anywhere on the uh, blockchain explorer on the internet on a True Caller anywhere. Uh, you will not get to know that who that particular wallet belongs to. So we'll take a look at wallets and all. What what they are? We'll take a look at cryptocurrencies and all as well, uh, definitely, because we cannot leave uh, without without that. Uh, but uh, certainly, uh, uh, so that is all that is visible. It's public because you are able to see everything. You are able to see that when the transaction happened, how much uh, how much currency was transferred in that, or what was the transaction exactly. So later on in the class, these are all intertwined uh, concepts. So that's why when I say when I talk about uh, this happening, that happening. And then, uh, which which wallet, which coin, which uh, uh, hash, and all, uh, we'll we'll see to this. So some words might not be clear at the beginning, but it definitely will be after you're through with the course, right? So uh, so the wallets of the users are visible. Which wallets is the transaction? Uh, when was the transaction? When did the transaction happen? What was transferred? What did the smart contract run? Right? What data was transmitted? What currency was transferred? If currency was transferred, and uh, so everything is visible. Who did the transaction is not visible. You can never know that Abhishek sent ten bitcoins to uh, my friend, right? You cannot know that. My wallet address, which is thirty, forty, thirty-six, forty character long Ethereum address or a Bitcoin address, that will be visible. You cannot make anything out of that, right? And exactly, and the private key to that public uh, key is with me, so I can log in into my uh, into a, into a wallet, and I can see how many bitcoins I have. But on the other hand, uh, you can never know that the, that that particular wallet. Which has ten bitcoins? You'll even get to know that my wallet has ten bitcoins. 
but you will never get to know that i am the owner of the wallet so that's that's uh, so that's essentially what uh, uh, public being public but also being anonymous means right so uh, just would want to go back a bit here <clears throat> and we were talking about immutability and hack proof so hack proof how does it become hack proof blockchain came up with a concept that uh, anything that goes uh into a blockchain network it becomes a part of a particular block which is in a blockchain network which is in a, a part of a blockchain you will not be able to change anything once that is on the network right why does this happen and why can you can you not uh, change uh, anything that that once goes on the blockchain and this is a very 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 important concept this is what you will imply whenever you would want to implement blockchain as a technological solution to anything so please please listen to it very carefully we have implemented blockchain in our warehouse receipts because of this one characteristic you cannot go back and you cannot change those 1000 kilograms of rice to 2000 kilograms of rice because that is what that is the only thing that does not happen but if but if the maharashtra uh, warehouse corporation uh, printed out a paper receipt uh, paper uh, printed out a paper receipt just before printing it's on your centralized database it's mongodb it is sap the sap system you can really go about tampering with the data right it's very easy so no uh, that is why we brought out uh, brought blockchain into this this particular use case and it's it's doing really well it's helping it's helping the government it's helping the banks and it's helping the farmers as well right so <clears throat> right so uh, right so that's that's where so that's where hack proof nature of blockchain comes because when one transaction is put into uh, the blockchain a lot of work goes goes on it someone who wants to go back and change that record would want would have to do more work than what was put on it and that is not possible because uh, first of all uh, we'll see in especially in mechanisms where a uh, consensus mechanism is proof of work we'll see what kind of uh, work goes behind actually finding the solution before which you can you can uh, put a block block into the blockchain right so when when that happens uh, it's 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 very important that we understand that going back and spending all those resources all those computing power and all that money into changing something that happened two blocks back or even the last block is very 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 difficult because this is this is very important please make a good note of it this is why people use blockchain and this is why people has uh, uh, so 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 someone has asked that uh, what if someone has input a wrong transaction and wants to correct it later you cannot that is the whole thing you cannot what you will do is so for example we'll take a look at smart contracts the technological advancement called smart contracts uh what they what you have to so if you put a wrong incorrect smart contract what you have to do is you have to go and uh, in, uh, you have to deploy a new smart contract and in your app you have to refer to that smart contract in, instead of the previous contract but that contract is there it is for the world to see that you put out an incorrect smart contract that it either that had bugs or that had wrong values or that took uh, so for example that took a, a function in a smart contract took uh, x and multiplied it with y whether whereas you had to actually divide so that's out there in the open you will your application will stop using that smart contract it will refer to the new smart contract but that old smart contract will be there forever for everyone to see right so so anywhere if 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 anywhere your uh, so once again so if yeah so if there's a uh, there's an incorrect transaction you cannot do anything as of today morning even internally or or with the with the stakeholder we were discussing that uh, so what we'll do, what we can do is that uh, we can change those rice uh, uh, the kgs of rice right or or we can we can uh, change the variety we can change the rice to haldi right if required if a farmer has inputted uh, incorrectly no you cannot do that when the receipt will be generated it will have 1000 kilo, kilograms of rice on it you cannot change it that is the whole core concept and that is why you have to be ultra sure when you are inputting any kind of data on blockchain there are a lot of demerits in the system but that is why blockchain should be especially implemented uh, especially blockchain should be implemented where you can afford those uh, demerits for for the benefits that the blockchain uh, technology provide right let me accept all and okay uh, can you share a real world example and instance that clarify the difference between bitcoin and blockchain yes manpreet kaur will take a look at bitcoin and blockchain very soon not now because that is exactly what i'm trying to avoid <clears throat> i'm i'm trying to really avoid discussing bitcoin before we know the core concepts of blockchain otherwise people who know bitcoin is equal equal box, uh, blockchain till now will continue to know that so uh, so allow me to get back to it later right okay sure so <clears throat> great all right so uh, i'll i'll go slow i think i've i've again uh, paced up and uh, 
So that is where uh, the hack proof nature comes. A lot of work goes in getting a blockchain, a block into the blockchain. And uh, yes, Bitcoin is an application, it's an implementation of blockchain, right? So, uh, so right. So uh, let's let's proceed. Those are the few characteristics. There's no central point of failure. There's trust in the system. Where trust is lacking, wherever centralized system you have a lack of trust, blockchain is your key. Blockchain is your answer. And wherever you find that there's you need the concepts of immutability, uh, uh, systems being unhackable, uh, transparency, anonymity, right? On the same time being public. Uh, that is exactly when you want blockchain uh, to be used, right? We'll see at uh, different types of block blockchains where, uh, uh, where even banks have used blockchain, but they cannot put their data uh, to, in the open. In fact, we have we are not using a public blockchain. We are still using blockchain. So we'll take a look at what kinds of blockchains we have and uh, what kind of entities want to use which kinds of blockchain. So that that would be a very good good learning uh, to do to be done, right? <clears throat> and uh, right, all right. So let's let's get ahead. So we've already seen this. All right, uh, before moving on, uh, do you have any questions, particularly because now we are getting a bit into the uh, further basic concepts and uh, <clears throat> all right, so so someone says that uh, can somebody awake one of us sleeping with camera on? I cannot see your cameras. Please, if you have someone, please uh, do the needful. And uh, can you tell the security flaws in blockchain? We'll come to that. Actually, that's a very that's a that's a very uh, good topic, and that's a very very long topic. Even in I've covered that in my book, and that has taken uh, uh, around forty pages, right? So uh, there are a lot of uh, theoretical security implications uh, in present in blockchain, no doubt. And uh, a lot of them are only theoretical. Practically, a lot of them have been avoided, right? Uh, but we'll come we'll come back to that. It's a very very secure system, ma'am. To to, uh, to 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 be really uh, talking about this, it's a very secure system. To be very honest, right? It's it's not easy to break blockchain. That's why it's it's, it's it, you can see here as well in the last slide and this slide. I'm just talking about the unhackable uh, character of uh, blockchain. It is really difficult to hack 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 a blockchain network. Why? That is what we, when we'll see. So if if there's a blockchain network with just two nodes in it, it's the easiest to hack most probably. But when we are talking about a network which has more and more nodes joining every day, you can uh, you you really can uh, not uh, uh, hack that kind of a network because that is the strength. So <clears throat> the more the nodes, the more the number of nodes that join a network, that is the core strength of a blockchain network. All right. So this came that's that's great. This is not I think I have not covered this directly, but uh, this is a very good concept. Please uh, listen to it carefully. The more number of nodes, the merrier. The more number of nodes that a blockchain network has, the more secure that would be. Clear cut. That's that's it, right? So, <clears throat> uh, so uh, that is why uh, that is where the level of security differs by 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 a lot of lot of uh, uh, factors, right? Just a second. Okay, I'll get all. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Uh, great. <clears throat> so going ahead, I'm I'm expecting. Uh, all right. So Lakshya Malhotra has asked that uh, topic on Bitcoin mining. So far, so as far as I know, last I checked uh, or I've known, Bitcoin mining is, I think, uh, currently even though even the Supreme Court on May fourth, I guess May fourth or March fourth, I'm I'm forgetting the date. Uh, very sorry, but uh, very recently you must have seen it in the newspapers as well. Supreme Court lifted the ban on uh, cryptocurrencies on not on cryptocurrencies. That's that's a problem. People thought that uh, Supreme Court had banned cryptocurrencies, but no. What Supreme Court had, Court had done was that uh, they had just asked its own banks, the banks in India, uh, which are which are uh, governed by RBI. It had just asked them to stop providing services, their services, their credit debit, credit card, uh, loan, every other service, to people dealing in cryptocurrencies for the purposes of dealing in cryptocurrencies. So that was what was banned. So cryptocurrency was not banned in the country, but banks stopped providing and that bank, so bank, uh, my bank blocked my credit card. That's for sure. So this thing happened, actually happened with a lot of people. And uh, so that is what was uh, what RBI had banned. Uh, but but back in back, the, just, just until recently, May 4th on March 4th, uh, the Supreme Court lifted that ban uh, after a lot of, so that's, that's a, that's, I think that's an 18 page uh, circular that RBI, that uh, the Supreme Court uh, took out. Anytime anyone who's really interested into blockchain, I read that entire 18 pages and believe me, it's, it's, it's boring. 
government documents are definitely boring def definitely boring but it is uh, it explains what happened and what it took to arrive at that decision to allow to cross rbi and to allow uh, banks to again uh, start giving services in 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 uh, dealing in cryptocurrencies and what it meant for our country it is a it was a humongous uh, uh, thing all right please share the article all right what i'll do is i'll i'll, I'll share the entire circular on the dashboard that i was talking about so you'll get access to that dashboard and you can you can use it you can see all the all, all of that is there and uh, so so it was it was it was a brilliant decision and then again india started dealing in cryptocurrencies but if you're talking about bitcoin mining last time i checked bitcoin mining or or any kind of such proof of uh, work mining when you set up all those mining uh, infrastructure and you mine cryptocurrencies like bitcoin i think that is banned in the country i am not very sure because i have never been into mining to be very honest i know what mining is i know it technically i know it mathematically i do not know it practically i have never done mining right i i, I may have done mining just to practice it just to see how it works on a cloud or and on a on a on a and on a, on my local system but not beyond that i have not earned anything from mining so uh, and i am pretty much sure that it is banned right now in the country so please take caution and 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 also don't consider this work don't take this a uh, disclaimer would be even if you are talking about bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies and the rates of bitcoin we will we'll see some examples where we have seen outrageous payments in uh, in 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 projects dealing in uh, uh, these these uh, uh, cryptocurrencies right and but anywhere we are talking about these things a the disclaimer would be that do not take this workshop as a uh, as a, as a, as a financial uh, recommendation right so anything please right <clears throat> all right so uh, all right so someone has confirmed that there is no ban on mining happy to hear that but you may proceed at your own risk uh, do check the government the country laws before before doing so but uh, yeah to just to share some insight on that mining since that question since this question came and i'm pretty sure a lot of people are interested in it um, let's take it up mining uh, uh, so uh, so uh, that's a very that's a very good concept uh, shweta ma'am uh, that's a very good concept that if mining is banned how validation and verification will be done that's a very good concept so uh, what i'm talking about is setting up infrastructure setting up servers consuming a huge amount of electricity consuming a lot of server space and then mining and then then uh, then then putting it out uh, in the network that is i think what our country is not supporting at the moment but i'm I, I, as i've already told you i'm unclear about that part but since we're talking about mining let's let's talk a bit of about mining um to be honest if you even want to do mining currently if you if you even looked into bitcoin mining currently if you are not so there are different types in which you can mine bitcoins let's so, so this entire mining has not been covered in my uh, entire three day presentation three day entire lecture uh, so i don't have a slide on it so let's discuss it a bit since it has come up uh, <clears throat> all right so so uh, all right so let's let's uh, take a look at that uh, there are a lot of ways which you can uh, with which you can mine bitcoins uh, very the first thing would be to try your own local computer or your your laptop your computer your desktop believe me that is not uh, practical anymore that has not been practical in the last few years as far as i remember because uh, the difficulty it's a network difficulty again we are getting into a concept which we have not covered which are which we are actually a bit far from covering uh, we uh, we get we get into a problem where uh, the difficulty of that network the difficulty is the difficulty you will face or the number of calculations you will require to arrive at the solution which is called mining right i'm i'm trying to jump concept because we have not discussed these concepts yet we have not discussed uh, nonce we have not discussed uh, anything till now right difficulty transaction hash everything nothing so but that is the difficulty is so high right now in the bitcoin uh, network uh, that uh, your local systems are just not capable of uh, uh so someone has asked me can you uh, all right so uh, uh, i think a lot of people have uh, pointed it out that something has to be done so let give me one minute and let me check uh, one second <clears throat> Hold on a second, please. Okay, so this is. <clears throat> uh, okay, so I have stopped, uh, but he's online again. So yeah, I think I think he's 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 uh, awake now. So I think your problem should be solved. 
uh, right. I think your I think your problem should be solved. The people who have asked me to switch off uh, the the video for for someone, I think your problem should be solved now. Yeah, let me share let me share the screen again. <clears throat> All right, great. Okay, so uh, yeah, so all right, so we, we were just talking about uh, mining per se, and uh, <clears throat> just a second. Please give me one minute, and let me open the chat. And all right, great, let's start. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, so the Bitcoin in, in case of Bitcoin mining, let's quickly cover it. We don't have a lot of time today, and uh, we are we are already we are we are. Uh, we are, we are already behind a lot, really a lot behind. We are on 16 slide right now. A lot is to be there to cover. And uh, so uh, mining has become very hard, very difficult in terms of Bitcoin. So there are a lot of other uh, equipments available. There are application specific uh, uh, computers, uh, ASIC, they, they, we call it ASIC computers. They, they are specifically designed to mine. Uh, then there are, uh, there are GPUs, GPU mining, you can do GPU mining, you can do CPU mining, a lot of things are there. So we'll, we'll, we, we won't cover that in detail, but uh, if you're thinking of uh, mining Bitcoin, please please uh, search on the internet once uh, before before going ahead. Right? I'm not sure about it at all. Right? And uh, right. All right. So <clears throat> let's start with behind the scene maths. And I'm 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 I think uh, I'll only uh, be able to cover this slide uh, because uh, this will take time. And uh, so we call that a blockchain is cryptographically hardened. What does that mean? Right? It's it's, it's cryptographically hardened. What what does that mean? So uh, we never discussed, but <clears throat> the entire strength, the core strength that, uh, that, the, that blockchain technology or any blockchain network gets is from cryptography, right? Uh, so I, and, and we have uh, cryptography is a bit, uh, and, and see all of the, uh, all of the attendees, most 90% in, in my, in my registrations, 90% of uh, the uh, attendees are faculties and PhDs. So I'm pretty much sure that a lot of you already know about cryptography much more than I do. And you might have been teaching that for years now, <clears throat> but, uh, and, and I have not covered that either in my PPT, but cryptography is so important in blockchain that uh, it, it, it is the core strength of blockchain, right? So you have to understand that, uh, <clears throat> how it is, uh, how, how cryptography plays such an important role. And in my book also, the first entire part of my book is on cryptography basics to proficiency in cryptography without discussing a single concept of blockchain. Blockchain starts from the second half of the book. So that is how cryptography, how much cryptography and uh, crypto cybersecurity and all these concepts apart from blockchain are, uh, are, are very, <clears throat> are, are very important, right? So, <clears throat> All right, so uh, let's let's get at it. So cryptographically hardened means that every time you want to push a, a, a transaction in a blockchain and that in, in a block and that entire block into a blockchain, into the blockchain network, right? You use cryptographic uh, cryptography heavily. And not only that, cryptography even starts from, from, from a step uh, before because uh, when you are even transferring some, some uh, your, your transaction, transacting between two entities, you are using a public private key combo and the other person is also using a public private key combo. So that's, that's, that's a typical use case of cryptography, right? So what you do is you have a private key, you have a public key. Then you do a transaction, you know, the public key of the other person. And then you, when you do a transaction, you do the transaction to that person's public key. And that is what is visible on the blockchain network. What happens behind the scenes is that you have access to the private key for that public key. When you log in into a wallet, the wallet matches the private key with the public key. It, 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 it actually just uh, encrypts that entire data and sees that whether you are uh, with this public key and the private key are a match. And then only the transaction is permitted. And then only you can log in. And every action you have to do this public private key matching. That is how, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah. So, and, and that is that is how, uh, that is how we will, uh, uh, that is how exactly uh, the blockchain network works because it's totally dependent on cryptography. So this is where one cryptography is used going ahead, <clears throat> going ahead. What happens is uh, when you are putting a block in the blockchain network, again, the uh, cryptography principles take place and uh, you are, for example, in a consensus mechanism, like a proof of work, all you are doing, all the, all that every, every validator every node, every validating node, full node on the network of, for example, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a proof of work uh, currency, uh, blockchain. We'll, we'll see that. And everything that they are doing is essentially uh, just solving a very, very, very difficult cryptographic problem. 15, 20 different people or maybe 100 different people are solving that cryptographic problem at a time. 
whoever has more resources will be able to solve that obviously uh, whoever has why it's obvious that i'll tell you <clears throat> why it's obvious that uh, whoever has more resources uh, whoever has more resources will uh, be able to uh, actually uh, get the answer the first that is because when you are solving a cryptographic problem in the case of proof of work you don't have the answer the answer is what you have to find you you don't have to you don't have to perform any mathematics to secure the block all you are doing is you are showing that you you are showing proof that you did the work to arrive at that solution that is all important right it might seem absurd right now maybe we'll, we will be covering that in a slide later maybe today tomorrow uh, but uh, certainly uh, uh, that is where the truth lies that is where the entire security and the entire cryptography lies you are just hitting you are just using hit and trial to find the answer to a very very difficult cryptographic problem and uh, whoever is the first one to arrive at a point where you you really cannot do anything other than just hitting and trying right so hence the one hence the person who has uh, the is not everyone new uh, All right, I've muted all, and I have not allowed anyone else to unmute themselves. So I think it should be fine now. Uh, all right. So, uh, so someone has asked who broadcasts that cryptographic puzzle in a POW POW consensus. That is what the network provides, right? That is what the network provides. So we'll we'll take a look if if time permits. We'll take a look at uh, uh, what exactly that what kind of problem Bitcoin especially uh, has because it's a good example of a proof of work blockchain. And we'll take a look at uh, how how these things uh, take place and how the calculation is done and uh, what what exactly is the math behind it, if 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 time permits, right? So <clears throat> so that is what happens in 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 this case. That is what happens. You just show that you have done a work by solving that problem. Whoever the first person is, and usually the first person is the one who has the most num uh, amount of resources, right? And uh, huge server farms and all. That is why people have started uh, combining themselves with uh, mining pools. Just to pool their uh, resources, and uh, then those mining pools uh, uh, mine those Bitcoin blocks, and then what they get in return, uh, it's just distributed based on the resources that were uh, that every every contestant in that pool uh, provided, right? And uh, so just digressing a bit, uh, just some days back, May twelfth, May twelfth, it was uh, I think midnight for us, India. Uh, a very important thing in the Bitcoin network happened, uh, which I think you guys should know about. It is that. Uh, I think this was the fourth halving. Fifty, yeah, yeah. This was the fourth halving. The fourth halving of the Bitcoin network happened. Of the of the Bitcoin currency happened. What does that mean? Is that back in two thousand nine, when it all started, when uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, who's the who's the creator of uh, Bitcoin, the currency, uh, when he uh, sent the first uh, transaction, that was fifty bitcoins. That's a different story. The first transaction done was of fifty bitcoins between Satoshi Nakamoto and another person called Hal Finney. Uh, but when uh, the, when the first uh, transaction on the network was uh, back in 2019, when it was mined, the reward that the miner got was 50 bitcoins. So it started from 50 bitcoins. Gradually, after a set time, which is around four years, uh, always after a set time, it is uh, around four years. It's not not a set time. It's it's after a, after a particular a number of blocks. Uh, what happened was uh, the first halving happened. What it means is that from 50 bitcoins, it straight up halved to 25 bitcoins, which is the reward that you will get for mining. So then, after that, when people started uh, mining, whoever was mining, they from from 50 bitcoins, they started getting 25 bitcoins in in return. That is how the math works uh, in in the case of Bitcoin. Maybe that is why the scarcity. Maybe that is why the supply scarcity, and that is why this humongous, outrageous uh, rates that Bitcoin has followed, right? And and because of the uh, limited, uh, because of the limited. Uh, uh, quantity that we have. Uh, someone has written that uh, the voice is cracking. So can you, anyone else? Can anyone else please write uh, if the voice is available uh, just to confirm so that I can pause if that's the case. Fine. All right. I've got, got, got two and two, three. All right. Great. Thank, thank you so much. Um, all right. So uh, we are very lucky that I got my broadband bank since morning, 5 a.m. or so. I don't have my broadband. I'm, I'm on my mobile network. And that came just to 2.15 p.m. when we were doing this when I had to disconnect. So we are very lucky. So let's continue with that. And uh, uh, so, yeah. So where was I? So <clears throat> so that's that. Yeah. So Bitcoin halving. So that happened. And uh, after that, after again, after a few years, uh, with the, th the second Bitcoin halving happened, uh, which was. Uh, so this is, I think, the third Bitcoin halving. Yeah. So uh, after that, it became 12.5. So until until May 12, uh, uh, all the miners on the Bitcoin network, after mining successfully, mining a block, were getting 12.5 uh, bitcoins as uh, the reward. 
from May 12th, they have started to get uh, the, the third Bitcoin halving has happened and they have started to get 6.25 Bitcoin. So that is a very important uh, day in history. Just happened in front of us uh, 12th May. Uh, a lot of people were witnessing it. So, um, so that is what, what, what that is. And so, yeah, so that is how blockchain is cryptographically hardened. Going back to that concept, right? <clears throat> uh, it's, 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 it's such a hard problem that, and okay. And someone asked that why 51%? The 51% attack is all about that. To tamper anything with the Bitcoin network. Now what you would have to do is you would have to go back uh, to the previous block where you want the transaction to be changed, right? But to create that blog, a huge amount of resources went. Now to, to edit anything in that blog, what you will have to do is you will have to imply, Im implement more resources, further more resources to get it broken, to get it, uh, to, to, to get it changed. And then of course you'll be able to change it because uh, that's the essence. If you're, if you're in proof of work, if you're having more resources and if you can, if you can give those resources, <clears throat> you will be able to change. This will break the basic characteristic of blockchain being immutable. So this is a very, very, very important characteristic. If you guys are uh, not paying attention, please pay attention to, to this one line. Uh, or it'll be a little bit slow. This is a very important concept. If so, this is as you as someone also asked, what is the security flaw? So if someone, especially in proof of work based uh, uh, solutions, uh, protocols, uh, uh, networks, if you can arrange if you can implement more network resources and more work than went uh, to, to make that block. If you can implement more resources, you can really go back and you can change the block. But why is it a theoretical concept? Because when the moment, see the Bitcoin network gets so big, it requires so much of uh, resources, so much of work to find one uh, answer and to make, to mine a block. It takes such a lot of pressure and such a lot of uh, calculations. That when you are implement, <clears throat> when you are, uh, when you are, when you are doing, when you are, Again, uh, implying uh, a larger amount of resources in doing this change. First of all, you are spending a lot. That is the whole point. People spend a lot because if they're able to mine a Bitcoin, uh, mine a block in the Bitcoin network, they get 6.25 and, and until now 12.5 Bitcoins in returns, right? 12.5 uh, Bitcoins would be uh, some, so one Bitcoin is currently as of, as of last night, uh, I guess, uh, one Bitcoin is approximately $9,700, right? So <clears throat> that's one Bitcoin. So you're getting 12 and a half Bitcoin. So to get that, you are ready to spend a lot. So now when someone is already spending a lot to cryptographically secure the blockchain and, and, and add a block to the Bitcoin network, what will happen is that if, if someone else, if someone else takes that entire, uh, their resource and again, uh, uh, deploys it in just taking the, uh, just rolling it back and, and changing a transaction in the last block, two things will happen. First of all, you would have spent a humongous amount in arriving at that position to be able to change anything and to break the core concept of the blockchain network that is immutability. And once you do that successfully, this is a distributed network. This is not just to a bank and you, a bank and, and, and maybe some industri industrialist in the country, they are colluding in between and then you're, you're, you're just colluding and then you're uh, doing it. It's not that. It's not that simple. It's a distributed network. What will happen is the entire network will get to know that something has happened because everyone else will be having that different ledger, right? It is very easy in a blockchain network for everyone else to, uh, to, to get to know that whether someone was, uh, went maligned or not. Right. So <clears throat> once that happens, the bit, the, the network, the blockchain network itself will lose its value. What people will do is people will poke it from there and people will take a different network and will, will, will proceed with that network. So why will you even do it? First of all, you implemented. Uh, uh, first of all, you implemented an entire uh, lot of resources, a lot of money in making it, in changing a transaction. And then the B B blockchain network lose, lost its uh, essence and people forked it and went away with a different uh, stream of the blockchain. You were uh, left with nothing. So it is in the best interest of the uh, node itself to not be maligned, to be honest, to be good, to be benign, right? So that is why <clears throat> the 51% attack is very theoretical, but it's very impractical because, because no one would want to do it, especially in a, in a big network like Bitcoin, where, where it will be a, an idiotic thing to do, right? Clearly you can understand, right? Someone has asked to find my transaction. Do I need to traverse entire ledger? Yes, of course, to find just, uh, for example, just like if you want to find a, 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 an entry in your MongoDB or in your, uh, in your, in your relational database, you have to traverse the entire database, right? Now you don't have to do it manually because what you do is you, 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 uh, what you do is you search uh, 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 in, in your explorer for that particular entry. Similarly, we have a lot of explorers available for even public blockchains. 
to go to that explorer you have to search uh, your transaction to search your transaction you can either use your hash you can use your uh, you can use your uh, block number if you remember where the block it was you can use all of these things so that you, with which you can search for your transaction right and uh, right so uh, all right so i think uh, let's put uh, so currently bots can be used to bypass this 51% theory uh, bots are nothing they would again be nodes right and bots would be yours to for you to implement bots you will again have to make sure that the bots have those uh, resources uh, behind them again the story lies the same right uh, great so uh, i think we'll have to, it's 4:15 pm i think we'll have to uh, close uh, dr pushpa ma'am can you can you please confirm that whether 4:30 pm is a hard stop or can we go ahead and also guys if you can also uh, write in the in the in the uh, chat box that if 4:30 pm is a hard stop for you as well hmm. all right all right all right and you can write it publicly please and uh, definitely <clears throat> uh, for people from france it is uh, fine to go ahead thank you thank you uh for confirming that all right great now i just have to get a note from my university that whether it is fine uh pushpa ma'am whenever you get time please please write in the chat that whether we can go a bit beyond uh, 430 because a lot to be covered because i cover these things across 6 hours when i'm teaching physically i cover cover all these concepts across 6 hours a day not not 2 hours a day 6 hours a day across 2 days back to back so that's 12 hours uh clearly we for us we have this weekend we just have 6 hours half of that so i don't know how much is going to be covered and uh, all right so we only have 15 minutes left i'm sorry we'll have to close uh, by the time and uh, no problem i'll try to uh, adjust a lot of that for the tomorrow session otherwise i'm always here <clears throat> and uh, so can go beyond tomorrow yes it is already going beyond tomorrow to sunday so we have the entire uh, dr uh, ajaz ahmed sir it is already till sunday so uh, it's three days uh, so we, you you'll, you'll get a lot of chance and uh, all right so that's where we were so that is where cryptography plays a role let's go ahead and let's see what distributed consensus is we have a slide we'll see it later mining we just discussed that's good we covered a topic mining we just discussed we'll see more on that later uh all right uh okay let's 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 uh, let's close it on this slide last point i'm discussing is that what merkle trees are and uh, why it is the unhackable truth truth because it is a continuity of the discussion we were having just take two minutes more so what happens is that every time you do a transaction on a blockchain network so for example i did a transaction with my friend that transaction will be made into a transaction hash that will be or uh, maybe that could be anything that could be using any kind of algorithm like sha256 it could be uh, sha256 which we use now what we will do is <clears throat> we'll create a hash out of it now the parent transaction the the, the, the transaction previous to to, to my block uh, uh, so my transaction goes into one block then uh, that block has a transaction hash then uh, the previous block also has a transaction hash all of these transactions uh, the hashes are combined to create another hash and the root node the root node the, the root uh, of the entire blockchain is where uh, it, it has the final hash so what happens is so if you can think of it as a tree structure what happens is the entire tree these two uh, child uh, transactions the child nodes might be having a transact uh, a hash which gets gets added into the hash of the parent uh, transaction of the parent node what happens is in this entire tree structure merkle tree is the hash of the root what happens is if you change even a single character in a single digit if 10 uh, dollars uh, instead of 10 dollars you just make 11 dollars was sent to the other guy any change in this will what it will do is <clears throat> it will it will reflect a change in every other step that was on on top of that because that is what it is because every hash has the hash of the next transaction in it so any change in the subsequent transaction will bring about a major change in the previous transactions hash right and this way the merkle ha hash the merkle tree the merkle hash will change whenever the merkle hash changes everyone the entire network gets to know that that something is a problem right with this we end it we'll continue this tomorrow and uh, it it it's it's it was fantastic to have you all here we will we'll just see some of the uh, uh, instructions for tomorrow but uh, that's what that that's what it was uh, there's more to what goes behind the scenes in terms of mathematics when we are talking about blockchain blockchain is a very mathematical concept blockchain is a very technical concept but if you abstract that out 
and just take a look at the use cases, the applications, the core characteristics of why blockchain is. Even very new engineers who have no idea of cryptography can use blockchain. Having it is a very good thing. If you want to be a blockchain engineer, you should be knowing cryptography, but everything can be handled. And this is one of the best skills I've seen and I've learned in my own life, in my, in my entire life. And uh, uh, this is the future. There's a reason. Okay, so in the beginning, when I said that this has been called as the a pillar of the fourth industrial revolution, comparing it with steam engine and uh, steam engine and uh, internet, this was said by World Bank. They are not joking about blockchain here. LinkedIn is not joking about blockchain here. The facts and figures that we saw, 0.25%. Come on, that is the competition. That's all the competition you have. I can tell you, if you start this weekend, by the next very next weekend, you will can become a blockchain engineer. Of course, you'll need more development time to be put into yourself, but you'll be way ahead of that 0.25%, uh, especially of that remaining percentage who, are, who have nothing to do with blockchain, right? Who do not know blockchain. Just a bit of uh, preparation and skills and all can help you, especially get ahead in this scenario when, when uh, we are facing a pandemic. And in India, I was seeing the numbers. In India itself, I think uh, over, over 10 crore, 12 crore jobs are going to be easily lost. It's, it's coming, I think. Either it has already happened or it's going to happen. All right. Uh, uh, Dr. Pushpa, uh, ma'am, I think uh, you are you're replying to me uh, privately. So uh, you'll have to change it to public before giving the link to a link for attendance. And yeah. So let's take a look at the instruction. I'll have to exit my presentation because that is somewhere else. Um, uh, why I am sorry, I'm not able to go to the last slide directly. So you can see we have a lot to cover. We have Bitcoin to cover. If you're interested, particularly in Bitcoin, we have a lot to cover tomorrow. Uh, I wanted to cover these today. And this uh, we celebrated Bitcoin Pizza Day just on May 22. Uh, so congratulations. But uh, uh, we'll see what it was uh, tomorrow. And uh, then we'll see a very brilliant example, a very cute example of uh, kitties that uh, broke the Ethereum network. That, that's for tomorrow. And uh, We'll take a look at one of the most important concepts of smart contracts, dApps, and uh, a lot of these things. Very good concepts are coming up for tomorrow. We wanted this to happen today, but it's fine. All right. Uh, all right. So day one conclusion, prerequisites for day two. As in the beginning, uh, whoever was there, I had listed that uh, there is a there is a classroom uh, uh, dashboard that I share. I publicly maintain it, and all of the resources are there. Uh, Pushpa, ma'am, I'm just going to take one more minute uh, to complete this uh, conclusion. So. <clears throat> What we do is what what I do is particularly I get to I get uh, I get all these things like uh, every morning I have uh, I have a brilliant network in blockchain itself so people are every day sharing a lot of content uh, on, on on various WhatsApp groups on various uh, uh, on Telegram and everywhere and on LinkedIn and all whenever I find something groundbreaking and something really great happening that I want my students and everyone else I know to to learn. What I do is uh, I, I put it on this dashboard. It is very arranged and you'll find all the information handy and uh, uh, you can comment there. Please do not comment anything, any kind of spam because uh, that's not what it is for. Uh, that's not for marketing, uh, but uh, uh, that there's also a WhatsApp group. There's a lot of uh, material available there. Don't spam on the board. Don't spam on the WhatsApp group. Anything you join, uh, just use it for education, please. Uh, one of my co-authors is uh, <clears throat> the principal consultant for blockchain for the government of India. He keeps on, he is already an author of seven other books and he keeps on sharing great stuff because Indian government is doing really great in blockchain right now, uh, internally. And, uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll just share the, I'll just copy and share this link one second. And so, so you'll find a lot of content there. I put all these there in the WhatsApp group in the, on the dashboard and, uh, anything else prerequisites, everything will be there. I'll just copy. I'll just try to copy this before that. I'll also copy one more thing that is truly very, very, very important for me. Please guys, if you're there. This very next slide, this is probably the most important slide for me. It is actually an anon anonymous and a very super short uh, feedback. Just takes you 10 seconds because you can just rate it and give your comments if you want to. That's not mandatory. Please submit this. I would love if all those 253 participants I can see here. If, if you, I take very close look at the feedback. If you please uh, give feedback on this, even today, you might be seeing a lot of changes uh, in the tomorrow's, in tomorrow's lecture itself. So it will take you really 10 seconds. I mean it. So I'm copying these two lectures. Let me just try to do that. <clears throat> All right.
uh, Pushpa, man, just one second. I'm I'm just copying this, and then you can take over. I'll see. I have. To, I think I have to unmute you. Yeah, I'm just sharing. I'm just sharing. Yes. Uh, I don't know why I'm not able to paste here and. Uh, Okay, I'll just write it. So this is the feedback link. I would really, really request you. I think yeah, I have put it correctly. Please, do it. if it does not open, let me know in the comments. I would really request everyone to please provide this feedback. It is not going to take more than ten seconds, and it is. Uh, and this is yes, ma'am. I'll give. I'll give ten minutes for query. I I have that remaining. It's four twenty or twenty five right now. and uh, i'll i'll try to paste this one uh, here uh, so that you get an idea of uh, what the board looks like this is very helpful i've made sure that it's very helpful just one second yeah dashboard link i'm giving one second just one second yeah <clears throat> here it is so the feedback link the dashboard link uh the dashboard thing will be public forever because after all, all the lectures i take i put content here itself so uh, even even uh, content for prior lectures should be there available soon as well and uh, thank you very much thanks for joining us even one week later we have to cancel it because of a devastating cyclone but and today we were also devastated with a network but uh, thank you for bearing with me any feedback please provide there i'll make sure i incorporate them before uh, before before i get on uh, on the call tomorrow and i really hope to see every one of you turn up tomorrow we have a lot in and this was so this is not the entire ppt this was day one's ppt this was day one's presentation day two day three are completely different and they are not red colored they are in a different color scheme i would love for every one of you to be there okay so uh, so pushpa ma'am i'll just take questions now and uh, thank you for your great comments thanks a lot uh, uh, please put your questions if any if you don't want to put here if there's if there's lack of time you can put it in the in the group in the uh, on the dashboard uh, anywhere right great oh okay once again ma'am i'll i'll unmute you i'll try to unmute you uh, uh ma'am i've asked to unmute you you might have to unmute yourself now can you please check whether you're able to do yeah Uh, ma'am i see that you are uh, unmuted uh hello Am yes I yes ma'am can you speak a bit louder yes hello yes ma'am yes 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 so uh, dear all if you have any question and query then you can ask to abhishek or you can write in chat box yeah please prefer writing in chat but it would be really great because yeah. we had a hard time in the beginning uh first unmuting everyone so it would be really great if you can please write in the chat box i have uh, in fact uh, i have handled a lot of questions that came in the in the between uh from tomorrow i'll be doing one thing i will be switching off the waiting room uh, because that distracted me a lot i was not very this distracted in my any of the lectures i've taken taken uh, till now and also we will I, so i will not have my chat on uh, tomorrow i hope my network to be good and uh, so please write in the chat box otherwise you can reach out to me anytime uh, how can we create our own blockchain all right so that is one thing we have for uh, the hands on session uh, so so please please bear with uh, me till then uh, you can really create your own blockchain because blockchain is nothing is not a not a very big thing right it's it's just a, a setup where you can give the give the validation and give the condition to three different nodes uh, spread over a network or it can even be your own network on your local computer or even using a cloud uh where uh, you can you can do that uh, as well so uh, and okay uh yes they will manage the waiting room from tomorrow i am trying to do that yes okay uh one thing i forgot saying is that uh, we we got a us based partner which is odem.io uh, who are responsible for giving us this great opportunity to share certificates on the public ethereum blockchain we could not see we could not take a look at ethereum blockchain today otherwise you would have understood very clearly what it means uh that's made possible and the zoom also this this the zoom uh, subscription with 1000 participants was just brought today morning because uh, because we were 
okay, the internet connection is a bit unstable. We were expecting 500 participants, but then later we, we, we received about 900, 800 uh, registrations across for three days. So we, so ODEM uh, from, from US have, have given us this opportunity. And uh, of course, uh, Delhi Technical Campus has been very accommodating when I, when I had to request them to postpone this, uh, this for a week. Uh, thank you very much, uh, ma'am. Thank you very much, Divya, ma'am, for, for uh, doing this. Thanks yeah. a lot. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Thank you, Abhishek for yeah. providing us valuable information on blockchain, smart contracts, and cryptographically hardened. I'm uh, really thinking about, worried about uh, that blockchain, how much it is secured or not, really. Right, so as, I, as I said, it is very secure, ma'am. It is very secure. We'll typically look at the uh, core characteristics of security, but as I just explained, why, it is, uh, why Bitcoin is unhackable, right? So the more the nodes, the merrier. So that was one just line about uh, uh, Bitcoin blockchain security. We'll, we'll explore more and more such methods. Uh, soon. It's very secure. Okay. It's the sec most secure networks you see, you're seeing at the moment. <laughs> okay. Thank you all for attending the day one FDP session on blockchain technology organized by Delhi Technical Campus Greater Noida. I hope uh, you find day one session informative and worthwhile. We look forward to you seeing you at day two and day three session also. Okay. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, you, I think, uh, ma'am, one second. I think people are having questions, but I think we have reached four thirty's deadline. So, Saurabh Jain, I think you have some questions apart from your uh, blockchain question. So, you can uh, just post them on the dashboard or directly to me. I'll take them up tomorrow, or you can just please join tomorrow. Anyway, I'll take up your questions and I'll answer them. Make sure. And one more thing, ma'am, we can give a give overview of the topics that we'll cover in next two days. I've already given, so uh, half of this presentation is remaining, which is imperative because this is all about basics, and we have covered a lot of ground here. Apart from that, some hands-on to start tomorrow and majority of the hands-on, which is difficult, will be for uh, day three, mostly. So tomorrow is going to be very beautiful hands-on. We'll, we'll look into the Ethereum blockchain and, and how public data can be seen and all questions that you all had today, that uh, whether we can interact, whether we need to traverse the entire blockchain, all will be answered just tomorrow itself. And uh, okay, can you share your PPT and your book? PPT has a bit of uh, uh, proprietary content because I also discussed my own uh, startup some, somewhere. Uh, but I'll make sure a lot of it uh, be available. And can I share about my book? Yes, I'll do that on on I'll do that on tomorrow or on the dashboard definitely. And and another book is coming up, which exactly ba is based on this this very uh, sessions uh, structure. Uh, all hands on everything with an international publisher. So stay, stay tuned for that as well. And uh, rest, I would love to see you all tomorrow. Uh, please take over, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Pushpa, ma'am. Hello. Yeah, ma'am. Please take over. Yeah. Okay, okay. So thank you, Vishay, for providing us a valuable information on blockchain. And thank you all for attending the day one FDP session on blockchain technology, which is organized by Delhi Technical Campus Greater Noida. And uh, I hope you today you enjoyed the day one session, which is really very informative and worthwhile. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at day two and day three session also, as Abhishek, you are telling uh, that day two and day three session will definitely uh, going to be more and more interesting because uh, some hands-on will be there, some XRM, XRM contract, you will, tell, uh, you will tell about that. Yes, so once again, uh, I just thank you. Thank you to all of you. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you so much, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks a lot for joining. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Hello, Abhishek. Yes, ma'am. I'm just, uh, someone has asked for the link. Ah, you just send uh, them link or you can also. Um, I'll, yeah, send, yeah. Uh, so can them, right? Study material. Yes, yes. You can send all the PPTs, recording session, and study material, whatever you want to provide them. Yes, so yes. Just share with me so that I can yeah. mail them. Yes, ma'am. That's 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 best because then then everyone will will receive the email. So I think that. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. So please await an email from DTC from Delhi Technical Campus, and you will have all the information. Apart from that, you can definitely reach us out. Uh, reach out to us anytime. Thank you so much. So hello. Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm just uh, so shall I shall I just close the uh, close it? Is it fine? Uh, yeah, so my side is okay. You can yeah. close this. Yeah, so I'm just I'm just I'm just uh, closing it.